Hello and welcome to another episode of Chop It Up. Today, we're going to be dealing with a few issues. Uh, first and foremost, Barry seems to be missing again, so he's probably off doing something hopefully productive. Um, I'd like to address a short question that was presented to JR this week. Out here in the world and in the YouTube universe, there's a lot of people that have agendas. They have purposes, you know, things that they're always focusing on. And some of them asked JR, they said, well, what are you guys at Chop It Up doing? I mean, I think it's cool what you're doing and, you know, talking politics and, and being kind of funny, but what are you guys really trying to do? So I'd like to get to that right now. For myself, what I am trying to do is show and prove that there are people locked up in prison. I know that sounds kind of crazy, right? People locked up in prison. Of course there's people locked up in prison. Most times, people out here on the street only look at the number. 100,000, 90,000, 40,000, 40,000 inmates that did this, 90,000 inmates that did that, nonviolent inmates, violent offenders, all these different labels, right? The bottom line is these are people. Some of them are good people. Some of them are not so good people. They're still people. And I am here every time we get on this stage, every time we, I go anywhere, to establish, to show, and prove that there are people in prison. When I got out, I did the Lockdown 23 and one show, and there was... All kinds of comments across the spectrum. Oh, I don't think this guy's been to prison. He doesn't act like he's been to prison. He was probably a white collar criminal. And there were other guys that got the info from my case and said, oh, this guy's a monster. You say he's okay and he's not. So it was across the whole palette. The bottom line is I'm a guy. I was in prison. I was in prison for a terrible crime and I'm still a person. And there are still people in there. And I try to show and prove that the stereotype that a lot of people have out here does not fit because there are good guys that are limited by that stereotype because there are people out here that have no idea about guys getting out of prison and they will not help them. And worse than that, they will harm them through neglect. They will harm them based on their stereotypes, based on their misconceptions of what people in prison are and what people in prison do. Just like everything else in the world, every construction worker is not the same. Every law enforcement officer is not the same. Every teacher is not the same. And every inmate and every guy getting out of prison is not the same. And I'm not telling everybody, hug a prisoner when he gets out, invite him into your home. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is be objective. Treat each individual getting out of prison as an individual. That's what I'm here to do. And I can't speak for anybody else and I won't try. That is what I'm here to do, to be myself, to show you who I am, where I came from, where I want to go, and hopefully establish that there are individuals in prison and individuals being released from prison. That's what I'm here to do. So I just had to get that out. Um, my bad. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle, what are you here to do? Well, that's a very good question. So one of the things that like you had said is there's a very us and them mentality. There is, you know, we are either good people or bad people. We have either, um, you know, done right or done wrong. And one of my biggest role models uh, with the work that I do is there's this guy, his name is, um, I think it's Father I think he's a father, but his name is Gregory Boyle. And he does a huge um, gang outreach out in California. And um, with him, he says the way to erase the margins is to stand in the margins. So it's to stand with the people that are marginalized, the people that are thrown away, the people that are considered less than. And that's the only way that we erase that group. So it's about standing with people that have been uh, marginalized, that have been deemed as less than. And, and there's like something where you can invite people to your table or you can decide to sit at their table. Mm. And for me and for who I am, I'm opting to sit at their table. 
I'm opting to stand with them as opposed to having them stand with me. I go where people are, not where I want them to be. And I feel that that's the only way to move us from an us and them society and make it a we society. So that's why I do this show. That's why I'm here. That's why I hang out here. This is why I do the work that I do. This is where why I am who I am. And if you have not checked out his stuff, he is absolutely fantastic. He works out in LA and he started a whole gang intervention program where once again, he did not make them go to him. He goes to them and stands with them in a non-judgmental um, sort of a way. And he runs Homeboy Industries. And he's like, one of the books that he wrote, um, Tattoos on the Heart, is, I love that book. I love that now, book. Now, so, I got to make a, a confession here, especially if we're talking about fathers. So I'm going to tell you how old I am. When you started talking about fathers, my mind went to Father Guido Sarducci, who used to be on Saturday Night Live when you said there's a father. That's what I thought about right then. I said, wow, Guido Sarducci, go figure. But um, that's because I'm watching Hulu and I'm watching the old uh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I've noticed. You keep sending yeah. links about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but did you see that Robin Williams was awesome on The Tonight Show? Did you, re did you watch that? Oh, yes, that was incredible. Awesome. You got to watch that bit. Now, uh, moving right along, not to get sidetracked, I'm almost afraid I'm, 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 I'm dealing with a lot of trepidation here when I asked JR, JR, what are you here for? <clears throat> well, just to uh, go along with some of the things that uh, Michelle was saying, uh, he is a father, Father Boyle, and I like that, that attitude that he has overall. But my main thing is it's all about dialogue, and I tell people that 70% of all incarcerated people will eventually get out. Therefore, my question is, do we want people coming, entering, re-entering society, <clears throat> returning to society better, the same, or worse than when, when they went in? And again, it's all about whether I go to their table, they come to my table, we're still going to dialogue. And that's the important part because I think most of the misconceptions and misunderstandings or stereotypes come from a lack of dialogue. So my thing is what we're doing here and the other things that I do is all about dialogue. We have difference of opinion or have an opinion and get it out there. It's not about being right, wrong, or indifferent. It's just dialoguing. And I believe any good dialogue, when we leave the table, we should leave with more information than we came to the table with. Right. Whether that changes our opinion or our philosophy or whatever, that's not the point. The process of actually dialoguing. Okay. Um, I've got a question. i got a question here. Uh, you said, you made the statement whether a person uh, improves, stays the same, or gets worse, right? Okay, I'd like to give you a scenario. I played a lot of I, I played a lot of poker in my time. You know, I had a job yes. playing poker. Jr., you know this, and mm -hmm. um, I'd like to give you a scenario, and I'm going to ask your opinion. You sit down at the card table. You start with a hundred dollars. You play for five hours. You've gone up. You've gone down. You've caught some hands. You've had some second best hands which are the worst hands to have, second best. I'd rather look at my hand and see it's garbage and throw it in than look at it and say, man, there's only one hand that can beat me and that hand ends up being in somebody else's hand, uh, those cards. But you go up and you go down and at the end of five hours, you have $100 worth of chips still. You started with 100, you still have 100. How would you characterize that session at the card table? How would you describe that session at the card table? Briefly. Well, <clears throat> There's, there's a couple of ways of looking no, at no, it. No, no, not a if couple I, ways. How would you, what fits no, I'm best saying, I'm, to you? I'm looking at it a couple of ways. One, if I went in for recreational purposes. Nobody does I, that, by the way. No, uh, I happen to do mm. recreational gambling. Okay, yes. Loser. But, Guys who play for fun, yeah, lose. Yeah, oh, okay. But but the, the other part is, again, the process. Because like all good poker, every hand's a winner. Is how you play it. I can no, bluff you out listen, of the best hand. Hold on. Kenny Rogers said that because it fit the song. 
every hand no, no. is not a winner. No, I can if I can bluff you, no. you can have the best hand. And if I can bluff you, but here's the point. The point if, being if ifs that, and buts were candies and yeah, okay. nuts, it'd be Christmas <laughs> yeah. all year long. I can see yes. this is going pretty long. Could you please sum it up for me, please? Come on. Come okay, on. no, I I would look at it <laughs> as as a a good process, and I mm-hmm. will come out even. All righty, Michelle, how do you see that? You had a hundred bucks. You sit down. You go up. You go down. You win some hands. You lose some hands. At the end of the five hour session, you still have a hundred dollars. How do you characterize that? I can go and compare that to slots because I play the slots. I start out with that hundred. When I get down to nothing, I'm done. But if I go up, I go up. If I stay the same, I stay the same. And I am one that plays it recreationally. I think either I could have spent that $100 doing X, Y, or Z, or I could spend it sitting in the casino. Five hours passed either way. I'm either the same, less, or worse. So, or better. Okay. But at the, at the end of the day, I did it because I passed some time. It was enjoyable. I like seeing the spinning lights, the little things come up, the sense of anticipation that I might win kind of exciting so okay. you know if yeah. i come out even that's great it cost me nothing for five hours of fun all right um well when i play uh <laughs> I'm, i've basically been a hired hand you know my job was to get on the table and win money and uh it's my belief that everybody who sits at the table sits from greed greed is the motivation they sit down with some money and they want to win more money with the money that they have, you know, so they're not sitting there to pass time. They're sitting there to win money. And to my way of thinking, may I interject? I'm usually playing the slots because my husband's following that philosophy and he's at the blackjack table. Right. Gotcha. Well, that's why my question was if you were at the poker table, you know, but it's good. Um, As I say, it's my belief that most people sit down to win money. They sit down, they have $20, they want to leave with 40 or even 50 or even 100 you know what I mean? And if I sit at the table with $100 worth of chips and I play for five hours, and at the end of five hours, I have $100 worth of chips, to my way of thinking, I lost five hours. See? Because I sat down there with a job to do, something, a goal. And if I spent five hours at the table and failed to achieve that goal, I've lost five hours. See, and in that same perspective, when Jr. said if a guy goes to prison and either he comes out better or comes out the same or comes out worse, you know, to me, every day is a plus sign, an opportunity for us to add to ourselves some kind of way, whether through experience, whether through direct learning, you know, some way we're supposed to add to ourselves. And if a guy goes to prison for three years and comes out the same, without any more tools in his toolbox. What he did was he lost three years. That's the way I see it. He lost three years, you know, and it's on the individual to provide his own opportunities to grow. You know, we are the equal sign for each day. Each day is an addition sign, a plus sign, and we are the equal sign for each day. And as a society, we have to provide a means and methods for guys in prison who do want to improve themselves. And until we do as a society, it's like we're trying to climb a mountain, but there's a ball and chain around our legs. It's not on the prisoner's legs. The ball and chain is not around the inmate's legs until we provide a place and a time in the prison system for inmates to improve themselves in a realistic sense. We are the ones burdened. Society is burdened. That's the way I look at it. And that and that is true because think about it this way too. As taxpayers, we're providing the money anyway. It's just the, the way they're going to use it, whether it be yeah. DOC, the government, whatever, how they think is the best way to use this, this resource. And I, again, I'm of the true belief that it is, if 70% of all inmates are going to return to society, and we're investing money, why not invest it in the opportunity or at least give them the opportunity to prove themselves right. and return as better citizens? And I don't mean better in the sense as whether they're going to be negative or positive, but I mean better equipped to succeed in society. Right. Because think about rehabilitation. Right. 
But see, it's, you it's keep, a tricky thing. Hold up. Let me just cut you off. Let me just cut you off here. You use the wrong perspective to my way of thinking. It's not to give the inmate the opportunity to succeed. It's give the inmate the opportunity to help society as a whole succeed. It's like we're a one cell organism. Mm -hmm. And until the inmates can get out and be productive and help society succeed, that's the well, bigger maybe picture. Well, but that maybe that's that's a little misunderstanding. As far as I was saying uh, earlier to Michelle, we use words in different perspective. Right. By default, when I mean return as a citizen, what is expected of a citizen? To right. be a law-abiding citizen, to have a job, to contribute to society. Yep. Not to take a. Right now, prisoners are negative on all the resources of society yep. because we take and we don't give anything back. Right. Whereas outside, we're taxpayers and we're doing productive things. So well, that's what I mean about returning to society. To me, that's a given. If you return to society as a productive member of society, right. then we're doing all the right things. Mm -hmm. But to return to society and become a non-productive member, it's, it doesn't matter if, whether you're in prison or outside, sure. you're still a negative to society. Right. Because you're not adding anything to the whole. You don't have anything to add to it? Yeah, I think what is being said is sometimes, you know, there has to be an understanding that we are all in it together. All of us as a as a country, as a society, as a world, we are all in this together. And we are only as strong as our <clears throat> weakest member. And in mm -hmm. order to have a stronger society, we sometimes have to reach out and uplift that member. Sure. Even if they don't deserve it right then, even if they don't want to, because that's a burden on all of us by mm -hmm. not uplifting that person. And then part of that is giving them the tools so eventually we don't have to uplift them ourselves. Mm -hmm. They have the ability to contribute on their own. Oh. And that's that's what I think about it too, is you know, sometimes when we're at our weakest, we have to carry that member. Right. And then we have to help them be able to stand on their own. But I feel like what happens a lot is we don't take care of our weakest members. So that way they can get back on their own. We just say, well, you're weak. But not understanding that carrying weak parts of ourselves drags all of us down. It's kind of like having an infection in your, your foot. You have to take care of that infection in your foot. Otherwise, your whole body system goes down. And right now, that's the way it kind of feels in the United States. We have yeah. the highest incarceration rate in the world. Sure. All righty. So we're just well, carrying around a broken foot. Well, if you liked it, press like. If you dislike it, hey, press dislike. Who cares? Just give us some <laughs> feedback. And uh, please subscribe and share. And uh, what do you say? Uh, personal information is be listed in the description. We'll see you next time. All righty.